Garrett Riley has been hired as the new offensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers. This is a home run hire by Dabo Sweeney. Just last night, you're probably sitting there looking at your phone, watching ESPN. Maybe you're browsing the On3 YouTube channel. You get the alert. You see it on the ticker. Brandon Streeter out as the offensive coordinator at Clemson. And then moments later, what felt like a couple minutes later, Garrett Riley has been hired as the new OC. And I bet the Clemson faithful today, if you're watching this, couldn't help but crack a big old smile and just feel good that you got somebody with a proven track record to this point. Younger brother of Lincoln Riley scored about 40 points a game last year at TCU. Took him from five and seven last year to plan for a national title this year. Won't talk about that game just yet. We will later in the segment. But he brings a lot to the table. He from talking to people at TCU, has a super calm demeanor, just never frazzled, never too high, never too low. And for a guy like Cade Klubnik, who's going to have his first year in the saddle at a program under the national spotlight that is Clemson, I think that's exactly what you need. Talked to a player over there, and he just said he's, he's fun to play for. He's a guy who uh, you, you his, his demeanor is infectious, is what I'm trying to tell you. He he's, has a, a personality that I think will mesh really well with what they're going to do offensively and who they have at quarterback with Cade Klubnik. Because when you have all this pressure on you as Cade Klubnik and everyone's expecting you to be the savior of your football program, you don't need a, a super high energy, loud kind of guy. You just need someone who's going to deliver the information, be the steady hand, and that in turn, I think, impacts the rest of the offense and impacts the quarterback for sure. But let's talk about what this means for Dabo Sweeney. Because a lot of people were talking down on his name. Forgot that he's got a national title or two to his name. Forgot that he's done some really good things since he's been there at Clemson. I'm just saying, Dabo Sweeney, I think, silenced a lot of the haters with this kind of hire. Now they got to do it on the field. Headlines are great. Press conferences are great. But they got to deliver on the field. But I think, in short, it just shows Dabo's willingness to do what's best for his football program. The offense didn't have the year they wanted to have last year. DJU got a ton of blame. Okay, DJ, he got, he got a lot of blame. Brandon Streeter got a lot of blame. A lot of pieces of this offense got blamed. And at the end of the day, when you're not getting the result that's desired from your football unit, the offense that is, man in charge, is held responsible. And a lot of us were curious to see if Dabo Sweeney would make a change because his principle is he sticks with his people. And I love that. I mean, I, I think that is tremendous. I think that's what you'd want in any coworker, any friend, any individual is loyalty. But credit Dabo Sweeney for not having his principle and his loyalty come before the betterment of, like I said, the entire organization. More thoughts on this. But really quickly, if you haven't yet subscribed to the On3 YouTube channel, we got you covered, man. 365 days a year we're doing college football content. Thank you for allowing us to do this. If you haven't yet joined the party, now's the time. Like I said, year round. We got you. Also, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at JD Pacal. It's a great medium for us to interact. Do more of what you want to see into this program. How about Dabo Sweeney being self-aware in this one, too? Because everybody had, had been talking down on the offense and talking down on Clemson as a whole after what they hadn't achieved this past year, which a lot of people would give quite a bit to achieve what Clemson achieved this past year, but they have set a new standard in Clemson, South Carolina. We'll talk about that in a second. Going into next year, they lose a lot of really key defensive pieces. A lot of pieces in that front seven that are no longer going to be in a Clemson uniform next year. So the reality is, we may need to score more points if we're Clemson. There might be some games where we got to be right around that 40 mark. Not every game. There's going to be some games we just show up, we're Clemson, we recruit at an elite level, we got elite talent, we're going to be better than a lot of teams we play. But in those games where we need a little bit extra oomph offensively, if we want to play for the college football playoff, we want to play for a national title, we need some more juice on that scoreboard. To understand, they may have to play different styles of games next year and to go out and get a guy, Broyles Award winner, for the best assistant in the country, I think, I think this was a tremendous hire. Very, very self-aware by Dabo Sweeney. So how is the offense going to look? Watch the tape. Talk to folks at TCU. The best summary is he's not trying to trick you offensively. 
He's, he's not trying to do all these razzle-dazzle things. They're going to do a lot with motions. We'll talk about that in a second. But ultimately, they're trying to put one person on that defense in conflict, make him choose whatever you choose, defender, you're wrong. You want to align close to the ball at the beginning of the snap. If you're outside linebacker, that's fine. That's cool. We got a RPO lined up. We're going to put the ball out on the perimeter, let our guy work. Okay. Also, what you're going to see a lot of is speed, tempo, and motions. Speed and the tempo is to wear out a defense and keep them from being able to substitute. The motions are to get a linebacker's eyes out of position. Because if I see my receiver motioning across the formation, and I'm a linebacker, and my eyes go with them, if I give at all position-wise to that motion, guess what? I got Will Shipley coming back across the formation inside zone, and I'm out of position. I can't catch number one, man. He's got the Jets, all right? He's, he's going he's to make me pay. So being able to do more with less is, I think, what Garrett Riley did last year. He won't have to do that at Clemson. You have a ton of talent. You have a ton of ability already on that offense. And that's not to knock TCU. Max Duggan, Heisman finalized, going to make a lot of uh, finalists, going to make a lot of money in the NFL. Quentin Johnston could very well be the first receiver taken when the draft comes around. But with that being said, Clemson recruits at a higher level than TCU. So if he did that with TCU's roster, imagine what he does with Clemson's roster. Imagine what he does with someone like Cade Klubnick, getting to work with him and help his maturation at the college level. I think you should be very excited if you're a Clemson fan. Now, the rebuttal to this might be, did you see the Georgia game? Scored seven points. Got absolutely drug. I hear you. I understand that concern. I would ask you to, to look more at the Michigan game than the Georgia game. Because here's the reality with Georgia. No matter who showed up that night in Los Angeles, California, at SoFi Stadium, Nick Brake and I were both there. No matter who rolled up on that other bus, they weren't beating Georgia. They scored more than seven points? Yeah, maybe so. But it was going to be bad either way. That was just the reality of what Georgia brought to the table. I would also say this. The level at which Georgia recruits at, they haven't had a class outside the top three in the recruiting rankings since dinosaurs roamed the earth. Okay, TCU, they recruit well. They don't recruit as well as Georgia. X's and O's are crucial in this game. They are paramount. The Jimmys and the Joes, though, they make the difference. You saw the speed of TCU just had no match for what Georgia had on defense. It just wasn't. It, you weren't able to properly run your offense. So do you like to see that if that's going to be your next OC? Of course not. But guess what? He took a team that was 5-7 and seven last year and got into the national title. Had him scoring 40 points a game. Going to have an NFL quarterback and an NFL receiver. I don't know if Max Duggan is getting the same kind of NFL buzz going into this year. It wasn't even the starter. And then he was in New York for the Heisman Trophy. So take of that what you want to. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. What I always say about Clemson, they are Chick-fil-A to me. The product is what matters. The process is unorthodox, but we're cool with whatever you want to do process-wise as long as that product is one of the best in the world. Closed on Sundays, that's fine. That chicken sandwich always hits different on Monday. You don't want to use the transfer portal? That's fine. We're going to go play for national titles. Now, here's the reality, though. There has been a slight drop-off these last two years from the standard at Clemson, which is playing for national titles, making the college football playoff. Year before this year, they didn't win the ACC. So, when you don't get the output you want, you look at the process. And you become a little bit less okay with that process if you're a Clemson fan because of the result. Hey, why aren't we going to the transfer portal? Why aren't we getting great talent? Why aren't we hiring these, these guys on a national level instead of you know promoting within? I, I like promoting within, but coach, we're not getting what we want to get out of this. So, we might have to change the process. Dabo Sweeney has shown now that he's not too stubborn to do what's best for his team. If it's going to help his team, he is not going to stick to his guns to a fault. Shows a lot of maturity. I say maturity. It sounds funny as he is very much so a grown man and done a lot in this game. I just think it's, it's, a, it's a humbling thing to stray from what you've done. And I think Dabba Sweeney, being one of the best coaches in the country, should absolutely be applauded for making this kind of a move and for making it definitively, being decisive, and for making an absolutely elite hire in Garrett Riley. So now the question is, 
how much more is he willing to adapt? And I think this could be the first peak that we get at Dabo Sweeney being up for a little bit of adaptation to what college football is right now. I'm not saying they're going to go and get 10 transfers. I'm saying maybe they get two or three from the portal. If you're willing to hire your staff differently than you have before, maybe you're willing to assemble your roster differently than before. So we'll see what happens with that. But Cade Klubnick and Garrett Riley, I think, are about to get after it on the scoreboard this coming year. Very, very excited for Clemson. Again, this is a top-notch hire. Good for Dabo Sweeney. Good for Cade Klubnick. Good for Garrett Riley. Good for Clemson. This has been the Hard Count. Nick, break, lifting heavy. This is y'all's show. We appreciate y'all rocking with us. Again, we're live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. Come hang out. We have a good time there. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at JD Paquel. We appreciate y'all allowing us to do this for a living. So thank you for that. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.